Installing a Z motor brake on the Onefinity CNC Elite Series. Please completely read and ensure that you fully understand the contents of Onefinity Elite Owner's Manual before you start using your machine. In order to minimize the risks of injury and or material damages, please only use the machine and the corresponding control and electronics when you are sure that you have completely understood the Onefinity Elite Owner's Manual contents and instructions. The Onefinity Elite Owner's Manual can be found on the support page of our website www.onefinitycnc.com slash support. Ensure that all power is removed from the machine before beginning work. The first thing we're going to do when we're installing our Z motor brake is unplug the old brake. We're going to disconnect the homing sensor and the motor connections on our Z axis. Next, we're going to use a number two Phillips head screwdriver or drill bit to remove our two screws holding our plastic motor cover onto our motor on the left side. Once those screws are removed, we can safely pull that cover off, exposing the wiring and the terminals underneath. And with that cover removed, we can simply pull the green terminals with the wires straight out of the motor. Once we've pulled our wire terminals out of our motor, we're going to remove the four bolts holding it to the Z slider itself. Use a three millimeter hex key and make sure we don't lose the washer underneath these as we will reuse these to install the new motor. Once we've removed all four of those bolts, we can simply pull the motor and the top half of the coupler off of the Z slider. Here we're going to use a 2.5 mm hex key to remove the other half of the coupler that is on the old motor, and we will reuse this on the new motor. We can slide that other half of the coupler back onto the rest of the coupler that is still attached to the Z slider, or we can just set it aside, as we're going to remove the whole thing here in a minute. But first, let's remove the spindle. We'll use a 4 mm hex key to loosen the bracket, and then we can just simply slide the spindle out of our mounting bracket and set it aside for later. As I mentioned just a moment ago, we're going to remove the rest of the coupler. We're going to use a 2.5 mm hex key to loosen both the set screw and the bolt, holding it onto the ball screw. With those two bolts loosened, we can now pull the rest of the coupler from the Z slider. You may need to use a small Allen key or a flathead screwdriver to leverage it out. Since the motor has a brake built into it, it will not turn unless it is powered, so we're going to install the coupler onto the motor shaft first. We'll make sure the set screw is on the flat portion of the motor shaft and use a 2.5 mm hex key to tighten those with about a quarter inch gap between the coupler and the motor. With our coupler installed on the motor, we can now place the motor back onto our Z slider with the board side facing towards the left. After we've got that seated there, we're going to reinstall the four bolts that we removed that hold the motor to the Z-axis gantry. Now that we've got our motor reinstalled, we can reinstall our wires as well. We'll just plug these back into the terminals the same as they were on the old motor. We're also going to reconnect our Z motor connection as well as our Z-axis homing sensor. Now we're going to put the cover onto our motor, just the same as we took it off. The red and black wires for the power will go through the left slot on the cover, and the remaining six wires will go through the right slot. Then we can use our number two Phillips and the screws that we removed earlier to reinstall the cover as we tighten it down. Once we've got everything reinstalled, we can turn the machine on and we will e-stop and release the e-stop, but we will not double tap home yet. Rather than homing, we're going to turn the machine on to continuous mode, raise our feed rate to 25-30%, to 30%, and we're going to jog the machine just enough so that the coupler turns and exposes the two bolts that we need to tighten. With those bolts exposed, we can use a 2.5mm hex key to secure the coupler to the ball screw. Once that's tightened down, we can reinstall our spindle and use a 4mm hex key to tighten that back into its mounting bracket. Finally, we can test our motor brake by pressing the e-stop or turning off the power, and if we watch the motor on the right, we can see that with the motor brake installed, it does not drop. This completes the Onefinity Z motor brake install.